What's up everyone? It's Kelsey Kuykendall with the Contemporary Art Digest and we are back with new content that includes an in-person visit to Gagosian in Beverly Hills to see their exhibition of Gerhard Richter's cage paintings uh, from 2006. We know we have an incredibly diverse group of people following us over at the CAD on Instagram, so you should follow us. Follow the YouTube too. Follow us here. Please follow us. Subscribe. Oh god, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm an artist. So we know we have an incredibly diverse group of people following us, which includes you know, established working contemporary artists who have vibrant careers, but also, you know, people who want to learn about contemporary art, people who don't have a formal art education. If you're interested in contemporary art, but you don't know a lot about art history and you want to learn more, this little deep dive on blue chip artist Gerhard Richter is for you. Let's get started. Richter was born in 1932 in Dresden, Germany, which was a part of the Weimar Republic. He was accepted into the Dresden Academy of Fine Arts in 1951 and became very skilled at socialist realism. Socialist realism is a form of incredibly idealized realism that was born in the Soviet Union and um, is essentially a form of propaganda that's used on behalf of the state or the ruling party. And Richter actually went on to take several commissions on behalf of the state of East Germany until moving to West Germany in 1961, just two months before the Berlin Wall was erected. When he moves to West Germany, Richter begins drawing upon this training in socialist realism to create photorealistic renderings of everyday subjects. But he embodies photorealism in the truer essence of the word, in that they're marked by the fallibility of the photograph rather than the perfection of the photograph. They're blurry, they're hazy, they lack detail. On photography, Richter says, a picture presents itself as the unmanageable, the illogical, the meaningless. This wrestle with meaning and truth and point of view is really aptly represented by his work Eight School Nurses, which at first looks like a row of blurry black and white school photos. But then you discover that these are the victims of Richard Speck, who entered a random apartment in Chicago on July 14th, 1966, and killed these eight young women in the first highly publicized mass murder case in America. What Richter's doing here is he's effectively separating the signified from the signifier. Oi. We have to talk about this. The signified and the signifier are the defining concepts behind semiotics, which is the study of signs. Because signs and symbols are so integral to making and looking at art, this concept comes up in art history a lot. So what do they mean? Say for instance that a lemon is your sign. The signified are going to be all the things that are conjured up in your mind by the signifier. The sign's physical form, an image of the sign, a printed word of the sign, anything that makes you think of the signified is the signifier. So in eight school nurses, Richter would be collapsing the signified and the signifier if he painted the gruesome images from the murders that these women have come to symbolize in the American public. Instead, he paints these really unsuspecting portraits that are only associated with the murders when the viewer makes the connection. Here, Richter is really trying to tease out meaning from subject matter and ultimately undermine our ability to have closure with the works. That dissonance is intentional and it's really where he's trying to arrive. Now, because Richter really refuses to be confined by any particular aesthetic ideology, he soon moves from photorealist paintings to the work he's most recognized for, his abstracts. Now, Richter has a few periods of work before he arrives at his most notable abstracts, but for the purposes of this video and the fact that we went up to see the Gagosian show, I really want to jump to the mid-1980s when Richter began using a homemade squeegee to pull bands of paint across a canvas. Using a squeegee effectively entirely removes his hand. We can't really reverse engineer an action behind any particular mark. Instead, they look almost like landscapes seen through a window or rotting ecological forms, but not really something made by a person. His detachment from painting really becomes the subject. 
His lack of theoretical commitment and elusiveness of meaning highlights a fundamental state of uncertainty. The work is riddled with contradictions, particularly the contradiction that he never escapes painting despite consistently attempting to negate its premises. He's creating paintings that look like blurry photographs instead of taking a blurry photograph. He's working adjacently to abstract expressionism while intentionally avoiding anything that smacks of expression. So being a pretty big fan of these large-scale abstract paintings, I decided to head up to the Beverly Hills Gagosian to see their show Cage Paintings, which features six of these large-scale works. Now, these works were made in 2006 and are apparently inspired by the avant-garde composer John Cage. Cage is really famous for his non-standard use of musical instruments and embrace of chance and uncertainty. So it really makes sense that Richter was so affected by his work. Richter apparently chose the name for this series based on the music he was listening to at the time, which were compositions by John Cage. And I have to say, these were incredibly beautiful. They're incredibly large, over 9 by 9 feet, and really dense with layers of paint that have been added and subtracted until they've reached some sort of finality, or as Richter says, the final yes. He describes the process of making these paintings as sort of a tension between composition and accident, a controlled chance, like that found in Cage's work. It's so easy to get lost in these. They're filled with beautiful pockets of sort of gnarly, layered texture next to these large swaths of softly muddled colors. It's clear that they're made up of a series of discrete bright colors that have been layered and scraped and layered over again until culminating in this very specific neutral. It's on the edge of completely devolving into a murky mess, but he calls it right before it's ruined, which makes them sort of thrilling to look at. So here we're seeing that right alongside this use of ideological contradiction is Richter's willingness to embrace aesthetic and compositional contradiction as well. And on the note of contradiction, it is worth noting the context in which these works are being shown. Although they're considered invaluable works of art that have affected the course of art history, they're still ultimately commodified objects that are for sale. This is of course the premise of any art gallery that's selling works, but it's particularly hard to ignore when you're in Beverly Hills, nestled between Wilshire Boulevard and Rodeo Drive. These works may be considered invaluable, but they're also unimaginably expensive. Two million eight hundred for the abstract by Richter. In this context, it's difficult to extricate the works from the ethical implications of selling $27 million paintings. What happens to art when it becomes a means of speculation for the ultra-wealthy? A way to diversify investments and to see returns on an artist whose work is appreciating in value. Suddenly the boundaries between Gagosian, which is dealing in artwork that is supposed to be enlightening and enriching, and the rest of Rodeo Drive start to bleed a little. This isn't to say that Richter's work isn't incredibly special or important, but the exorbitant sums of money that this blue chip work can go for is something you have to confront when you're looking at these works. With that being said, those are my thoughts on Gerhard Richter. If you liked this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, we make lots of content from both emerging and established contemporary artists. So go ahead and let us know in the comments who you want to hear from next, and I will see you all next week.